pain is one of those things that tends to paralyze us. Mm. And it can, it can render us ill-effective for any kind of work that we want to do, but especially for kingdom work, Yeah, right? And that's the enemy's main ploy for believers. Like he can't steal from us what only God can give us, right? And that's salvation, yeah. that's new life in Christ. Yeah. But he can rob from us our effectiveness for the kingdom. And he typically will try to do that through pain. Hey, welcome back to the Darren Early Wine Podcast. Excited to sit down again with another alumni of the podcast, Davey Blackburn. Davey, welcome back. Yeah, it's so good to be back with you guys. Uh, you know, Davey, I wish we, at some point, we just need to have our own podcast so we can actually just <laughs> you know schedule a time to sit down Honestly, and hang out. Honestly, that might be a good idea. <laughs> like, I, you know, we've been thinking about that. Like, what? Are you, how do you branch out for a podcast network? Yeah. And that would be a lot of fun. Let's ruminate on that. I like it. I like it. Well, it's, be it's been recorded, so we won't we won't lose it. But <laughs> maybe we're going through this series of, of walking through the different weeks in the sessions of spiritual yeah. DNA as we're relaunching the course and new video content, new participant guide. And um, the last session is uh, is called uh, Passion and Pain. Mm -hmm. And I would say uh, in all the years of teaching DNA, it's probably the most challenging or difficult session. Right. Um, you go through and you find out, you know, you're, you're, you're placing God's kingdom and you're like, oh yeah, that's awesome. I'm an apostle or whatever, you know, and you, you find your Enneagram and that's a little bit weird, but you're like, no, I'm digging it. No, I'm a type seven. That's right. You know, you go through strengths and then you feel awesome because you're like, I'm a superhero. Like these right. are my superpowers. Right. And then it's like, okay, we want to find out the place that you would feel most passionate about yeah. serving. And then we go, you might need to take a look at some of the more painful things of your life. Right. Right. And most people are like, no, nah, that's cool. <laughs> and I wanted to bring you on. We've had you on before and you've told your story mm -hmm. and uh, we won't go into all the details of that. People can go back and watch that episode. They can get connected to your ministry. Nothing is wasted, but uh, it's, it's not a stretch at all to say that you are an expert in helping people bridge the gap between, you know, pain and, and passion and purpose in their life. Right. And so I want to have a conversation about that to help people maybe either find the resolve or find the courage yeah. to go on this journey. Cause it's so important. So Thanks for coming back on the podcast. Yeah. I'm excited about this conversation. Yeah, I'm so excited. So this is very needed because you're right. Pain is one of those things that tends to paralyze us. Mm. And it can it can render us ill-effective for any kind of work that we want to do, but especially for kingdom work. Yeah. Right. And that's the enemy's main ploy for believers. Like he can't steal from us what only God can give us, right? And that's salvation. Yeah. There's new life in Christ. Yeah. But he can rob from us our effectiveness for the kingdom. And he typically will try to do that through pain. Yeah. And our, our unwillingness to move through some of that unaddressed pain. So this is so critical, especially when it comes to trying to figure out why am I here, right? The yeah. big existential questions that everybody everybody's asking, whether you realize it or not, where did I come from? Why am I here? That's the big one. And where am I going? Yeah. Davey, somebody, maybe they have, we're not going to go through the whole thing, but just catch somebody up real quick. Give them the, I mean, it, this sounds terrible to say, but give them the Cliff Notes version of yeah. a little bit of, of your story. And so they can, if they want to go back and hear everything, yeah. but just so they get to know you just a touch. Yeah. Back in 2015, I was a pastor and church planter. Uh, my wife, Amanda, and I had moved here in 2011 to plant a church. And um, and so we were kind of growing that and, and, and going through the painful process of that. I mean, church planting is difficult. Yeah, it is. And then in 2015, November of 2015, I came home from the gym and um, and found Amanda. Three men had broken into my home and uh, murdered her and our unborn baby. And um, my 15-month-old Weston was in his crib the whole time. Uh, but I came home to discover that. And obviously, that just that threw my world upside down. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. You know, that's to say the least. And so uh, ever since then, I've been kind of navigating my own healing as well as almost immediately being thrust into the spotlight of trying to help other people. And as a pastor, I'm helping my congregation at the time trying to heal through this massive tragedy. Um, so many of the, of our folks were so connected to Amanda. But then as I began to kind of discover some of the keys to, to healing in a God honoring way, um, you know, since then we've been, we've been asked to, to go and share our story at churches and we've developed an entire ministry around this idea of helping people move from pain to purpose. Yeah. And Dave, I think, you know, when if people can go back and like I said, listen to the podcast is that I think a lot of us, we're at a place where it's like, you know, I, I'll be okay in life as long as nothing really bad happens, yeah. Yeah. you know, but obviously your, your story is, is people would say what's, I mean, that's 
very aggressive. Yeah. I mean, not a lot of people go through what you guys have had to go through, but I, I don't know anybody mm. that doesn't have a, a level of, of trauma and pain right. in their life. Right. Um, from divorce to, to loss of a child to, you know, to, um, you know, brothers and sisters that, yeah. that just the pain of, of different things from the family of origin. I mean, there's just, yep. life is painful. That's right. That's right. And there are, you know, different levels, levels of that, but, um, it can be a place, like you said, that feels very paralyzing. It feels very scary. It's yeah. it's an unknown. But the great thing that I think that you uh, have shown and that your course, you know, the Pain to Purpose course brings so, so, such power to is that, like, n- literally, your ministry is called Nothing is Wasted. That's right, yeah. Like, God's in, in all of it. Here, here's what I'd like us to do in the conversation today, Davey, is for us in spiritual DNA, right, we take people, they'll come, they say, man, I really want to know my purpose, so I'm yeah. going to take spiritual DNA. Right. Then we take them and the, the end of the road there is <laughs> you might need to take a look yeah. at the pain yeah. because uh, because I have found most often your greatest place of passion for yeah. servanthood is often found in the crucible of pain. Right. You, with the Pain of Purpose course, take people, they come to you and they go, <laughs> baby, I know I got I've pain. I've got pain. Yeah. Listen, and I need some redemption. I need healing yeah. in it. And then you end the course and it's like, now it's time to find purpose. Right, right. So we we kind of have this crisscross of, of courses and journeys. Yeah. So for you... From your perspective, what are some of the common um, hurdles yeah. that you have to address when people are coming from pain and trying to to uh, believe again, maybe, right, right. that there could be purpose? Talk to us about some of those hurdles. Yeah, 100%. And, and before I say that, I will say that I would... St- I would say that just like it's critical for you to work through your pain in order to move towards your purpose... Yeah it's critical to repurpose your pain in order to move through your pain. Oh, wow. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Say more about that. So both of those two things are, they they work together so close at hand. Like you would say, you're going to discover a lot of purpose out of the crucible of pain because it, it it really galvanizes this, this holy discontent inside of you that says, man, I don't want somebody to have to go through what I went through in the way that I went through it, or I learned all these things in the process of it. So I want to help someone maybe shortcut that process. Yep. So that's my purpose in life, right? We would say it, similar, like same side or different sides of the same coin. In order to move through your pain well, mm. you have to discover purpose out of it, right? Mm. So Victor Frankel, you're familiar with Victor, yeah. Victor Frankel. Yeah. Maybe a lot of your viewers would be as well, but he was a Holocaust survivor. Yeah. And he observed, as he was in Auschwitz, he observed kind of what kept people going and resilient through that and observed later after everything was done with World War II, the people who were, you know, the the, the Jewish folks who were encamped in, in Holocaust camps, the, how they continued to move forward and not, you know, go absolutely crazy because of all of the trauma they had endured. Yeah. And he said the single greatest thing that propelled people forward was a sense of purpose. Really? That allowed them to move through their pain and continue to move on with life and be effective in life from there. And so he developed an entire therapy around it called logotherapy of this idea that like that is the single, he was a contemporary of Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud used to say that the chief aim of man is um, either to pursue pleasure or avoid pain. Mm. And, and you know, Frankel had gone through something so horrific. Yeah. That he said, wait a minute, there's something deeper than that. Yeah. Yeah. The chief aim of man is I want to know that this pain that I've gone through can have some meaning. Yeah. That there's something redemptive about this. Yeah. There's something that's going to be excreted out of this that's going to be used for an anointing, you know, to help other people. And so that's what I would say before we even dive into all of it. It's like these two things are so critically interconnected. Well, and I love that. And I would say one of the things that, that was jumping in my mind as you said that is like for pain to be able to have a redemptive meaning, for there to be meaning in suffering, like it has to have a theological root, right? Right. Because if, right. if we're all just random showed up on this planet and it's just, it is what it is. Yep. If there's not an, a, a loving, present, personal, powerful God right. in the background or in the foreground, in the midst of exactly. it all, then there really isn't meaning right. to suffering. Right. So a lot of this, I guess, whether it's going from pain to purpose or purpose to pain, is it, it's 
it comes directly into the crosshairs of what do we believe is true about God. Yeah, exactly. And and so one of the things we like to help people with is discovering, this is going to sound oversimplified, but it helps to put this in the, the these four buckets. Yeah. What are the perpetrators of pain is okay. what we say. Okay. There's four main perpetrators of pain. Who's who's the mastermind behind all pain, right? Well, the first one is that we live in a fallen and broken world. Very beginning of time, Adam and Eve swapped the truth of God's word for a lie. It fractured the universe. Yeah. Now we live in the fallout of that, right? That's one of the reasons there's pain in this world. There's crime, there's disease, there's hatred, there's rage, there's selfishness is because of sin, yeah. that brokenness of humanity. The second reason is because um, there's a spiritual attack, right? The enemy wants to neutralize your effectiveness. Yeah. So he's he is going to, as Ephesians 6 says, there is a... There's a battle that's waging in the spiritual a realm that we can't see, but we can very easily perceive if we're aware of that. And then another one is because of our own sinful choices. I mean, so many of us, yeah. we live in the consequences, yeah. the fallout of the consequences yeah. of our own sinful choices. I like to tell people, nobody's duped you, lied to you, deceived you more than you. True. And, and that's true for me as well, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but then another one is, is because of what other people, other people's sinful choices. Yeah. And it's really important to make sure that you put your pain in the appropriate bucket, because if you misappropriate pain, you're going to carry emotions that you weren't meant to carry. Hmm. So if you just, if, if, if you put it in the bucket of, you know, oh, I'm going to take the blame for all of this. And yet it wasn't your fault. Yeah. You're going to carry around unnecessary shame. Yeah. Right. But if you fail to take ownership of something that maybe you caused or yeah. you're going to fail to to learn from your mistake and you're, you're, you're destined to repeat that mistake and stay stuck in that pain. Right. So it's really important to understand. And then in the midst of all of that, there's this God, right. That we serve that's in, that's in the midst of all of our pain walks with us in our pain that, that um, he didn't sit up, you know, high and lofty and go, I'm going to watch my humanity in their pain. He actually entered into it yeah. into the most horrific type of suffering we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm right? Jesus on the cross. So he didn't just like say, Hey, here's how to go through pain. He demonstrated how to go through pain and how to, and, and then his message and his, his whole construct of how to turn that, how that's going to be turned around for a greater purpose with the resurrection. Yeah. Right. And so that's what we say that God's a great jujitsu artist. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he takes the, the opponent's momentum, what the enemy means for evil. And he turns it around against the opponent. Yeah. Um, Tim Keller would say that God gives evil enough space in our life that it ultimately terminates itself, mm. right? Because we all ask that question, why is God allowing this to yeah. happen? Yeah, big right? question. And we don't necessarily know, to be honest with you, yeah. like the mysteriousness of God yeah. and his ways are much higher than our ways. We don't know exactly why he allows this to happen, but we can be assured that in the midst of it, as it passes through the hands of a sovereign God, he already has a plan for which he's inviting us into to take it and do something against yeah. the enemy's work. Yeah. And when you start to do that, it begins to involve you in the redemptive process. It starts to give you meaning, mm. right? So neat. And so like for me, you know, the real enemies of my story, they're not, they're not the three guys that killed Amanda, mm. right? It's the mastermind behind all of it. And so when I share the gospel and share hope and share forgiveness and share, you know, and people they turn their hearts to the Lord because of Amanda's story and because I'm partnering with God and sharing this and casting this. Yeah. People meet Jesus. People get plucked up out of the, the the enemy's clutches and darkness. Well, who's at that point, who's ticked off? Right. Yeah. The real enemy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting this like redemptive vengeance on the real enemy. That makes me come alive. It makes me feel purposeful in this. Yeah. And it begins to kind of redeem, you know, with some meaning my story. You know, if I, uh, that's beautiful, A. B, I, I don't know, like, we both grew, both grew up in the church, right? Right, right. And I feel like so often, like, and maybe it was our generation that we grew up on over, but, like, the message, it was like, well, you got to trust Jesus because you don't want to go to hell. Yeah, right. And it was like the place that I really needed Jesus was, like, like make this decision here at the altar yeah, right. so that whenever, you know, the <laughs> curtain call, like, I, yeah. I don't go to hell. yeah. But man, the longer I live following Jesus, the reality is like, I don't, I don't want anyone to go to eternal hell, Yeah. but I feel like such the power of God is that when we're living in, in, I mean, that's right. Hell on earth. Yeah, yep. Exactly. With the pain, the mis the misunderstandings, the, everything yep. you just laid out yep. is like life can feel like hell. Right. Often. Right. But to have the power of like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not relying on Jesus for what happens down. I am yeah. what happens down there. Yeah. But, but 
I need him and there's such power and redemption of what he can do with the hell that I'm walking exactly. through right now and actually seeing his kingdom come and his will be done That's right. right here in what I'm working through. Yeah. Your life is an example of that. Your course takes people through that. And it's such a necessary journey. And that's what I hope, you know, through the end of, of, of spiritual DNA, when we invite people into that journey for your course, inviting people into the journey to say like, listen, if you can trust God with your eternal salvation, yeah, you can trust him with your temporal right. earthly pain right, right now to do amazing things with it. So good. You know, you asked the question earlier about, you know, what do we see that really inhibits people yeah. from being able to step into that redemptive yeah. purpose? Yeah. I think there's a few things that we see in that. I think we see, you know, one, somebody failing to acknowledge their pain, Yeah. Um, you know, almost diminishing it. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people come up to me after I speak at a church or something, they go, you know, I, I haven't gone through anything like you've gone through, but, and I stop them. I'm like, no, 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 don't compare your pain. Right. Pain is pain. Yeah. And if you're going to diminish it, then you're not able to address it. You have to address it if you're going to move through it. What's the quote about comparative suffering? I know my counselor said, said that to me, that same thing, right? Yeah. Where it's like, I, I can find a way to scapegoat myself to not really deal with it because it's like, well, exactly. you know, like, well, at least, you know, my kids aren't starving, right? you know right. what I mean? Or whatever and, it could and be. And on one hand, it is helpful to gain perspective sure. like that sure. and to gain inspiration from people who have these really awful stories. Like Jim and Elizabeth Elliott's story has always been very inspiring to me because yeah. I can go, wow, if they can, if he, she can walk through that, yeah. right? Yeah. I can walk through it as well, yeah. right? The same Holy Spirit lives inside of me that lived in her. And so he gives me grace for the moment to do that, right? And so so, so there's, there's, there's that side of things, but I think it's really imperative to make sure that we address it, right? That we're able to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Another thing that Viktor Frankl said is that he compared pain to like the gas chambers that he witnessed mm -hmm. in Auschwitz, where he said, no matter the capacity or size of the gas chamber, the gas filled up the chamber, Pain is like gas in a chamber. No matter the size or the capacity of our being to be able to yeah. handle that pain, it fills it up. Still fills it up. Fills it up. And so, you know, that's reality. And so I think what will happen if somebody doesn't acknowledge it is that they'll tend to suppress it. They'll tend to side skirt it. They'll tend to, uh, there's a scapegoat, right? And so then they, they don't actually move through it. And so they just carry it with them. Yeah. Not as like a scar, but it still is an open wound. Yeah. And then that comes out sideways, right? We always say that a feeling buried never dies. Oh, yeah. That, it, that ultimately it's going to booby trap you if you don't address it. And so I think you see people not acknowledge it. I think you see people not, um, you know, they, they don't, they run away from it. That's a big one. Because nobody wants to deal with the, the hard things in your past or the things you're going through. Like, yeah. who likes that? I mean, that's yeah. sadistic to go like, oh, I love dealing with pain. You right. know? Yeah. Nobody likes that. But it is necessary for us to, in order to, you know, Paul talks about if we're going to experience the resurrection of Christ. Yeah. We must first share in his sufferings. Yeah. That's the portal. It, everywhere in scripture, you're going to see that those that that sequence take place, right? Whenever it addresses pain it, or addresses like resurrection or right, though weeping may tarry through the night, joy comes in the morning, yeah. right? Um, you know, that, that, that first there was, there's Ecclesiastes, right? There's a time for tearing down and a time for building up. There's always this like, this like deconstruction that happens before a resurrection can take place. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I think people try to side skirt the, the deconstruction side of it and they want just the resurrection. Resurrection doesn't happen if there's not death. Yeah. And what pain does is it causes us to look inward and introspective and look to the Lord and go, what needs to die in me? Hmm. Right. We're like very, um, our hearts are very supple to be able to go, okay, Lord, what, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And we're very tender in that way. And so God can do a lot of change. I realized that in my healing journey, that there were some things that the Lord addressed in my heart that had nothing to do with me overcoming Amanda's murder, mm. but I was ready to hear from the Lord. Yeah. So he, he started sanctifying those things too. Yeah. Right. And so I come out of it just a much better human being. Mm -hmm. But that's that's if you if you lean into it, yep. right, and not yep. try to run away from it. I love it, David. Let's talk about timeline for a second, because somebody maybe you know they've they've been listening to this you know series for for this podcast, and 
they're like, fine, I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy mm -hmm. spiritual DNA, you know, spiritual DNA dot me is where you do it. Right. <laughs> I'm going to get the online course. I'm going to dump, you know, I'm going to yep. jump in because I want to discover which my purpose, which you should. Yeah, which you should. I want to, I'm going to jump in and discover my purpose in life. And, and you know, I, I'll, I will, I'll listen because I've listened to you and Davey. I'm going to really dive into pain, <laughs> but I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it about six days. <laughs> Right. And if, if I don't, yeah. if I don't experience great healing mm -hmm. in six days, it's not worth it. I'm tapping out. Yeah. What about timeline? What, what can <laughs> someone expect? And I, and I know the answer is probably gets different for everybody, but right. you're walking with people in various pla places of trauma. Is there, is there a, a pre-described, you know, preset timeline if you should, you should feel healed by this long? Like let's t t talk to us about time. That's a really good question because you're right. I mean, the short answer would be it's different for everybody, sure. you know, and we, we say oftentimes there's no one right way to walk through healing or pain, but there's a thousand wrong ways to do it. Yeah. And so how can we triangulate the right pathway for you based on so many different factors and criteria? Um, I would just say this, the, we want God to heal and poof. Mm. most of the time he heals in process. I, I heard you say that like last year or something. And I, I just, so you know, I've stolen it at least four times. Good. good. It's, I mean, <laughs> I stole it from my counselor, okay. so he doesn't preach. I give, so I give nobody knows that, it, okay, right? Yeah. He just, I, I was, we were in a room, but I was like, that's good. I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, but it, I mean, it's true. You know, sometimes God does. There's these like radical stories of these like dramatic healings and like this complete turnabout, you know, that took place in someone's life. But but not, mo That's not, I, not most of the time, right? That's not normal. Well, no. I'm glad you said that because I feel like, and I don't know, probably because it it, it it's it preaches well. Mm -hmm. Like too many people, like you and me, that are preachers, right? You want right. to get up and tell the miraculous story, like this right. guy, he was an alcoholic, or he had this, whatever. He prayed one night here at the altar, and poof, right. you know what I mean? Yep. Never wanted to smoke again, or never beat his wife, or yep. whatever it is. But it's like I know a ton of people in process. Yep. I don't know that many poofs. Nope. Mm -mm. And what's what, what I think is so dangerous is when we when we put out that expectation of God's going to work in poof, mm -hmm. and He goes, "No, oh, oh, oh. like I did that once or twice here, but like yeah. I'm looking for a process because I think God is actually more more excited about the presence that's right in our life that's exactly than right. He is showing up to be you know grant the yep. genie wish. Right. But I think so often with our pain is when it's not poof, people go like, well, maybe God doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's something inside of us that wants some kind of an outcome. Yeah. And then we end up idolizing the outcome. Wow. We worship the created thing yeah. rather than the creator, as yeah. scripture would yeah. say, yeah. right? And so the reason it's so much more important that we have the presence of God is because the presence of God is what sustains us. It's what fulfills us. Mm -hmm. It's what really is gonna satisfy us no matter what is happening in our life. It's the peace in the midst of the storm. And so if, if God worked in poof all the time, the story of the Israelites would go, they left Egypt and went right into the promised land. Mm. And that's not the story. Yeah. The story is, is they wandered around in the wilderness, literally circling this thing for years and years, 40 years, yeah. right? Which is actually like the, the number of testing in scripture. The Lord is testing to see, not testing as in like, oh, pass, fail, you're, oh, you, you failed, right? right? Testing to see where where their heart has changed mm -hmm. and, and, and to what degree do they trust him? Yeah. And most importantly, to what, to what degree has their identity been shifted? Because they were coming out of 400 years of slavery. All they knew were being slaves. Hmm. That's all they knew. Yeah. And so, it, so in any of our pain, what God is going to reveal to us is where are we in bondage? Yeah. Right? Where are we enslaved to these certain mindsets or these ideologies? And he wants to expose those. And then he's going to take us around the wilderness and put up these tests that we're confronted with. Like, okay, how do I respond as a son or a daughter rather than as a slave? Yeah. And so that's why in healing, you're going to find that people kind of, it's not a linear process. It's more of a circular process, right? And that people come back around, they're like, I thought I should have been further along. Why am I still dealing with this? Mm. Well, you got to think of it like a circular process. Yeah. Start thinking it. And, and what's helpful is to think of it as a staircase, Yeah. right? It's a spiral staircase that you're continually ascending up out of this yeah. as long as when you're conf being confronted again by that trigger or whatever it is, you're now responding just a little bit differently. See, I love that, Dave. I heard somebody say that one time about, about that process of healing, that it, so, like staircase, right? Mm -hmm. Is you're still going around the same pole. Right. And right. a lot of times you can be like, it's the same pole, yeah. right? Like I, I'm not, I'm not healing. I'm not cured. Like I have the same struggle. It's the same pole. What yeah. you don't realize is like, 
hey, guess what? You're 10 stories up right. from where you were, you know, five years ago. That's right. You know, it, and, and that's growth right. as opposed to, you know, being cured. And that's the last question I want to ask you because we, 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 what you've given us already, people need to listen to this episode four or five times just to get all of the content out of it. And, um, and when we get, when we're done, I want you to, to, to promote the course too, because I know there's gonna be some people that are going to go through DNA and they're going to be like, yeah. all right, it's time. It's time for the pain of purpose. It's in line with what we've been talking about. We want poof. And I feel like we really want to be cured, mm -hmm. right. Or completely healed or whatever it would be. And what I don't want people to hear in this podcast or through DNA is like, you're going to come through and God can redeem your pain and you can find purpose. And then everything's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you never struggle right. again. Right. You've trusted God with your pain. Yeah. He has taken you through a process of healing where you have found purpose and, and passion mm -hmm. to serve others and help them. That's right. But, are there still days where you find yourself going, yeah, this, this actually still hurts. Yeah. My goodness. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a very good point to bring up. You know, I think that the process for all of us is we are healed and we are healing. Hmm. Right. I, I liken it to, you know, if you have a major flesh wound, you know, for a while, it's going to be very tender and oh, to yeah. the touch, right. Yeah. Anybody who even breathes on it, it's like, oh, you yeah. know, and that's what any kind of like, pain is going to do, whether it's little T trauma that's compiled over time or a big T tragedy that's taken place in your life. And, and so once the, once the breath of, of the Holy spirit comes over that over time, it begins to heal it. Right. And it might crust over and it might rip off sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, just like you would yeah. any kind of wound, yeah. but eventually that wound becomes a scar and it's still there. And it still might even like you push hard, push hard enough. Yeah. Still might not even hurt, yeah. right? You might live with that for the rest of your life, but it doesn't. It's not to the. It, it, it's not the same as what it was when it was a flesh wound, and now the scar tells a story, mm. where you're able to go, "Hey, let me show you this," and you're not triggered by every thought of it, right? And you're like, "Hey, let yeah. me tell you about this. Let me tell you how good God is in, in the healing process." But there are absolutely days that you're going to be like, "Wow, that." That hurts. Mm -hmm. I think the difference is, is once you have the tools to know how to approach that hurt, it changes things. You have a lot more, I don't, I guess, Holy spirit confidence, right? Where you go, Oh, I expect that, that, that hurts. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now how do I apply the tools that I've learned in healing to that pain yeah. so that I feel like I've got some agency. I think a lot of times pain takes us over when we don't recognize agency that we have the Holy spirit, God given agency that we have to partner with him in healing. So good. It becomes overwhelming when it's like, Oh, this is how it's always going to be. Or this is how everything is, or this is me. You know, I guess I just always do this to myself. Right. And you just start feeling stuck. Um, and so I think it's really, really important to go, okay, no, I've got some tools now and now I can move forward in this yeah. and I can apply those tools to what I'm experiencing. So good, Davey. Listen, if you're watching and maybe you, you download this episode because you know Davey and, and you've gone through his course and and maybe you're, you're at the place now where you say, you know, I've actually I've been in process and, and I do need to actually discover who God created me to be and how to leverage that for purpose. Mm -hmm. Listen, spiritualdna.me, jump into spiritual DNA. If you're watching this podcast because you've been following what we do with Blackbird and what I do and, and maybe you're a spiritual DNA alumni and you go, you know what? And I know who God's created me to be, but... I, I got to get in process with some yeah. healing. Davey, how do they get, how do they get in, in, in connection to you and, and get you know, with your course? Yeah. If you really want to just dive into the course, it's at my pain to purpose plan.com, or you can just Google the pain to purpose course. Okay. It's going to pop up right there. And um, you know, we've got a devotional as well that kind of adds a, a supplementary material to the course. It's a 42 day journey. And so you can check that out also at my pain to purpose plan.com or if, you know, want it real easy, pain to purpose devo.com. There we go. It's all right there. And, um, and, and yeah, we would encourage it. I think it's, I think it's so imperative to go through both of these, to be honest with you, because they do, as we talked about before, they do pair up so well and they're both very critical. And in order for you to understand how you view pain, yeah. you've got to understand how you're constructed. No doubt. Your, uh, your so, spiritual DNA. Yeah. Everybody views pain differently. Yeah, I was thinking about that in my way up to, to record today. I'm thinking about for me as like an Enneagram seven. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it's I'm like an allergic reaction to pain or just negative right. emotion or right. thought, right? Right. And knowing that coming in, knowing like, okay, I'm gonna have an uphill, you know, grind on this. Just 
and how I react yep. and how I'm motivated towards it. But it gives me actually tools right. to know myself, to step into it and to go after it. You also have a podcast. Talk about that. Dave. Yeah, the Nothing is Wasted podcast. Uh, we just sit down and interview people who have gone through really tough things of any variety of pain. I yep. mean, it's across the board. And um, we we ask them about how God has brought them through that journey and what he's doing out of it. So it's really just trying to find those pain to purpose stories yeah. and feature those. So good. Davy Blackburn, absolute gold mine. Uh, it's an honor to call your friend. And uh, Likewise, I'm man. just thanks so much for being back on the podcast. Uh, you know where all the resources are. You got to go get them. And uh, whichever way, whichever course you're getting or, or, or buying for Christmas for your friends and neighbors <laughs> or whatever it is, just remember these three we'll things. We'll bundle them one we'll day. We'll bundle right? them. We will. <laughs> but God's for you, not against you. He's near you, not far away. And he's created you on purpose and for a purpose. Thanks for uh, hanging out for this episode of the Darren of the Wine podcast. Talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.